So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do some common statistical analyses that we use in the laboratory. So for this particular experiment, I'm going to use volume data, and I'm going to calculate the average of the data, the standard deviation of the data, and the percent error of the data. Okay. So I'm going to bring up some numbers here. I'm just going to go ahead and write these numbers down. Up here. So I'm going to call this run number. And I'm going to put six values. This will be the volume. And the units of volume here will be in milliliters. Okay, so the volumes that we have here are 5 5.0152, 5.0012, 5.0213, 4.9123. 4.9145 and 5.0210. Okay, so there's our data set there. Okay, so let's begin by computing the average. To compute the simple average, we're going to use the symbol x bar. So x is something that we're measuring. That's the variable that we're measuring. The bar is indicating that it's average. The simple formula for that is we're going to add up. So this is sigma over here. We're going to add up each individual value of x. In that case, this would be the volume. And then we're going to divide that total by the number of values that we added together. So if you look at the data here, we have six points. So we're going to add up six values. So n would be six for this. So we can write down here that n is equal to six. OK, relatively simple. So let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to sum up x sub i. Okay, so we add them up, 5.0152 plus 5.0012. So actually, let me put it in, let's put it in one line. Plus 5.0213 plus 4.9123 plus 4.9145, and then 5.0210. So let me do that on my calculator while we're taking a look at this. So 5.0152 plus 5.0012 plus 5.0012. 0213 plus 4.9123 plus 4.9145 plus 5.0210. And that total is 29.8855. Okay, so that's our total volume for six measurements. Okay. Now we're going to divide that by n. So the average is just going to be that sum 29.8855 divided by the number of measurements, which is six. So we're just going to take that total divided by six. And we get 4.9809 milliliters. Okay. 
seems reasonable. So some of the measurements are a little bit over five milliliters. A couple of them are under five milliliters. Our average comes out a little under five. That's relatively simple. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to show you how to calculate the standard deviation of this um, data set. Okay. The standard deviation is a little bit more complicated. The average is essentially telling us kind of where the center of our measurements are. So like if you have a bunch of measurements that are distributed across some range, the average is kind of telling us sort of, you know, where the middle of that is. It's not the median per se, but it's telling us what, where, um, yeah, to some extent where we're gonna find the most common value. Okay, um, but the standard deviation, what that tells us is how close our values are together, okay? So if you imagine that you have a bunch of different values, because you're making measurements of the same thing, so this is our volume, you know, you might measure it the first time and get this volume, and then you do it the second time and maybe you get a little bit more, right? Like, see how this one's a little bit more than that one? And then you get one that's a little bit lower, so it's over here. Okay. Now imagine, now we only did it six times, but imagine that you kept doing it over and over. And you did it like hundreds of times. Okay. What you, in theory, what you would end up with, as long as there's no, what we call systematic error here, is you would get randomized error. And eventually you get something that looks sort of like this, and we can kind of draw in a curve around that. Okay, and we're gonna call that a normal distribution. The average, in theory anyways, is telling us sort of like where the middle of that is, okay? Um, assuming that it is, that's what the difference distribution looks like, okay? Now, the standard deviation, it's kind of telling us how close these values are to each other. If they're really close to each other, we'll get a distribution that's really tight like that. If they're further apart, like more of a range, we'll get something that's a little wider. So the standard deviation is really telling us how wide this hill is. The wider it is, the greater the standard deviation. So in, in, you know, in, in essence, if you're doing some kind of experiment, you kind of want your values to be close to each other, right? Like if I were estimating how many people are in a train and I said, oh, 100, oh, 300, well, those are very big differences. But if I did it the first time and came out with 100 and the second time 105, those are pretty close values, okay? So the standard deviation is a way of measuring Calc through calculation, how close our values are to each other. So how close are these values to each other, right? Okay. So the way we do the standard deviation calculation is kind of involved. I'm gonna write out a formula for it. Okay, so I'm gonna write out for standard deviation. It's equal again to the sum. So we're adding things up together. In this case, it's a square root. I'm sorry, I gotta put the sum on the inside. The square root of x minus x bar squared over our n minus one. Okay, all of that's in the radical. Okay, so it's not divided by n minus one, it's the square root inside of there. And again, our x bar is our average. And then n is the number of measurements. So that would be six. But it's n minus one, we subtract one, and that gives us five, okay? Now, what's kind of challenging about doing this by hand with your calculator is that you have to do it for 
each value of x minus the average and then square it and do it for all of them and then add them up. That's the tricky part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a column of x minus x bar. Okay, then I'm gonna square it in the next column just to be consistent or just to be you know, coordinated and organized, I guess is what I'm trying to say, okay? So what you do is you take the first value the first value is 5.0152, and we subtract from it our average. Okay, oops. Okay, I just noticed that I subtract, I got rid of our average. Okay, so let me hold on one second here. Sometimes you have to be careful what you erase. O two one O, and then we're going to divide that by six. Oops. One, two, three, four. I'm sorry, missing one, one number here. Five point O one five two plus. There we go. Let's see if this works. There we go. Okay, I'm sorry. So our average, let's put it in here, 4.9809. Okay, so let me bring it over here again. So we're gonna take our first value, 5.0152, and we're gonna subtract our average, 4.9809. Okay, so it's 0 0.043, okay? Now I'm gonna square it. I'm just gonna take that difference and I'm gonna square it. So now we're gonna have 0 0.001176, okay? Now let's take the second one, 5.0012 minus our average, 4.98. Zero nine zero point zero two zero three, and then we're going to square it. Zero point zero 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 four one two one. Okay, so you just go through each one. So five point zero two one three minus four point nine eight. Zero nine equals and then we're going to square it. Four point nine one two three minus four point nine eight zero nine. Now notice you get a negative number here. But that's okay. It just means that your value there is a little under the average. So you're going to get a negative number. But remember, when you square a negative number, you get a positive value. So this is going to give us a positive value here. Okay. Let's take the fifth one, 4.9145. Subtract 4.9809. Got a number that's negative here, but that's okay. 
particularly since we're going to square it anyways. But there's nothing wrong with negative numbers. That just tells you one's larger than the other. Zero, zero, four, four, zero, nine. And last one is 5.021. Minus 4.9809, 0 0.0401, and we're going to square that. Once you get going on it, it gets faster. You get faster at it. You just have to kind of train your brain and your fingers to do the right things. Okay. So now we've taken all those. So now what this says is once you've taken those differences and squared them, we're going to add them all up. So we're going to add up all these numbers. Okay. So the sum of x minus x bar squared, I'm just going to add up all those numbers there. Okay. So let me go ahead and put here 0 0.001176 plus 0 0.000. Be careful with the zeros, because if you make one mistake on the zeros, it messes up your whole answer. So if we have 0 0.01394, okay? Now we're gonna divide it by n minus one, which is five, right? Six minus one. Okay, so divide it by five. So we've got 0 0.002789. And then we're going to take the square root. So our last step is we take the square root. Okay. Okay. So now this is how it's generally reported our answer. What we would report our average, our value is, we write it as the average plus or minus the standard deviation. Okay, so that would be 4.9809 milliliters plus or minus 0 0.0528 milliliters, okay? Now there's a meaning to that. Essentially what we would claim is that there's a 68% confidence that, um, or let me write it this way. There's a confidence that 68% of the time that we make this measurement, we're gonna get a value that's in between the average minus the standard deviation and the average plus the standard deviation. Okay, so what I mean by that is that if you write 4.9809 as your average, 68% of the time, we should get a value that's within at the higher end 4.98 plus 0 0.0528 and 4.98 minus, so minus 0.0528. Okay, so let me just show you real quickly what that range would be. So I'm going to do the subtraction first. So let me make free up a little bit of space here, right here at the top. Okay, so I'm going to take our average minus our standard deviation. So that would be 0 0.0, oops, not 0, 4.9809 minus 0 0.0528. Okay, so 4.98 
zero nine minus that's a uh, zero five sorry point zero five see those zeros you have to get those zeros exactly right or you're really going to make a big mistake there we go so minus point oh five two eight okay so you get four point nine two eight okay so let's do the x plus standard deviation, x bar plus. So that'd be 4.9809 plus 0 0.0528. plus 0.0528. And you would have 5.0337. Okay, so what this means, I'm going, I can now erase this here. I do want to keep the average in there. What this means is if I measured this a bunch of times, hundreds or thousands of times, Assuming that we don't have any systematic error, we're not doing the experiment incorrectly. Okay, this is our average. We would get a bunch of different values, some less than the average. That would be that direction. And some greater than the average, right? You're not gonna get exactly the same value every time you do the experiment. There's gonna be a range of values. So really what we're saying is that 68% of the time, we're gonna get a value that's between 4.928, which is right here, and 5.0337. Okay, and if we wanna have more confidence, because what this still allows us to have values that are outside that range, if we want to have more confidence that um, our values is within some range, we could use two times the standard deviation. And statistically, that works out to be around 95%, 95, 96%. And so that would be like, you know, two times the standard deviation would be there and there. And so then 95 or 96% of the time, we would have a value within that range. So we're more confident what the value is, but it's more traditional in the sciences just to report it plus or minus one standard deviation, okay? Again, the smaller the value of the standard deviation, the closer those values are, okay? Imagine the standard deviation just worked out to be zero. Then our average would be plus or minus zero, so it would be a straight line, and that would tell us that it's exactly the same every time. Now, that's not likely to happen, right? But, but that's what... That's how we might interpret that, okay? So we have one more calculation to do, which is the error. So I just wanna make sure I keep that average up there. And we're gonna call this the percent error. Now there's different terms that are, there's something called relative error. Um, I'm just gonna call this percent error. And this is a very simple calculation. What it is, is the experimental value that you measured minus the true value. So T for true divided by the true value times 100. Okay, that's called the percent error. So really what you're doing is you're saying, how close was my value to the true value? So let's imagine that this was an experiment where we were pipetting five milliliters of solution each time. So the true value, what we expect it to be is five milliliters, right? This is a five milliliter pipette. So the true value would be five ml. 
Okay, remember all those values that I put up there were very close to five. So here's our average. So this is our experimental, right? We call it the average, but that's our experimental average. And you know, ideally, if it's a five milliliter pipette, we should get five milliliters experimentally. And we almost did, right? It's really close to five here, 4.98. That's very close to five. So we'll probably get a pretty small percentage error here. So here's how we would do it. For the experimental, we're gonna use our average value that we just did there. Now, sometimes people prefer not to have a negative value. And what happens is if the average value, our experimental value really, is less than the, um, or is more, I'm sorry, is less than the true value. If it's less than the true value, you'll get a negative percent error. And sometimes people don't like that. So you can always put in the absolute value sign here or symbol. Remember what the absolute value does? The absolute value of a negative number makes it positive. Right, and the absolute value of a positive number is also positive. So it just turns a negative into a positive because we don't want to have negatives. And you can do that with this calculation if you want. So let's go through it. So our average value is 4.9809. The true value, this was supposed to be a five milliliter pipette, so five ml. Okay. And then I'm gonna divide that by the true value, which is five times 100, okay? So, and then it's the absolute value. So that's perfectly fine. Okay, let's come up here. So four, I, I, I reverse those numbers. It's 4.98, not 89. So 4.9809 minus five equals, divided by five equals times 100. Okay, so I get, if I didn't use the absolute value, it came out to negative 0.382, but I used the absolute value. So it comes out to about 0.382%. That's even after multiplying by 100, okay? Now, one thing that comes up is how many significant figures do you measure? Well, that's a little tricky because we don't know how many significant figures the true value has. So, um, you know, maybe it has three, maybe it has four. We, you know, it's a little, you know, I'm not going to go through the analysis of what that would be in terms of the pipette. It depends on the glassware. But, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to round it to a few significant figures here. We don't need to have more than three in our results. So this is pretty close, right? So the values that we had, those six values are, you know, pretty close to five milliliters on average. Okay. And there you go. So those are the three different types of calculations. Now, if you want to take a few more minutes, I'm going to show you how to do this calculation on a computer. Okay. Using um, a spreadsheet program. And the advantages of using a spreadsheet program is that you can, you can do these calculations um, much more easily, okay? So let me show you. I'm gonna do this for a different set of data, but I wanna show you how to do it on a, um, on a, on a computer. So let me stop there. And then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna share. If you don't wanna learn how to do it on a computer, you can just stop the video right here, okay? So let's imagine, again, we have six runs. And let's say, let's, let's say instead of five milliliters, the pipette is actually 10 milliliters. So, you know, 10.0102, that's our first measurement, 10.02. Three, two, I'm just making up numbers, 9.9834, and then 10.0512. Okay, so there's our six values of volume, all of them pretty close to 10. So let's say that our true value 
is 10 ml. I'll put the units over here, okay, in a different cell. So those are all entered in there. So let's do the average first. So I'm going to do the average. Oops, let's spell average right. Okay. Now on a spreadsheet, the way you do this is you highlight the first cell that you're working with and you just highlight all of them. Okay, that's essentially, so I'm just holding down the left mouse button. Okay, so you tell the computer equal sign, that tells, you're gonna do, tells the computer, the software, that you're gonna do a calculation by putting the equal sign. And then I'm gonna tell it what I wanna do. I wanna do the sum. Now, often when you're using spreadsheets, it will tell you, it'll give up some options of, you know, because there's different types of functions. I'm just gonna do the sum. That means add it, adding them up. So equal sign sum, and I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight down. I'm just holding down the mouse key as I come down. And it's going to pick cell C3 all the way to C8. It's going to add those together, close the parentheses, and then hit enter. So you got to do equal sign to tell it's a function, write the correct function, sum, and then use parentheses if you're using more than one cell. Okay, now that's not the average, that's just the sum. So I'm going to come back over to that cell and divide it by six. Why? Because remember, the average is the sum divided by n and our n is six, okay? There's our average, okay? So let me write our true value is 10, our n value is six. So I can actually do this cell a little bit differently. What I can do is instead of saying sum of C through C8 divided by six, I can take the six out and say, no, divide it by our n value, which is right here. I'm gonna click on that cell. See what happens up here? It puts in C11. It'll give you the same answer, but you're use, you know, if, if for some reason later on you want to change n, you can just change this number. If I made that a 10, it'll change it right there. That way you don't have to keep going through it. Okay. So notice the notation, equal sign, sum, everything, and then divided by the cell that you want. So there's our average right there, right? Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to do standard deviation. I'm going to do it in a couple of different ways. I'm gonna take uh, x minus x average. And then I'm gonna do x minus x average squared. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the sum of x minus x average squared, right? And then I'm gonna do the sum of x minus x average squared divided by n minus one. And then I'm gonna take the square root. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through each one step by step. Okay, so here's how we do this then. So I'm gonna to come to the first cell, this is x, equal sign x minus average. There's your average right there. Okay, now you have to be a little bit careful here um, because what we wanna do is we wanna take the cell that's left to the left of us here and subtract just that value. And so it's going to suggest an autofill. I'm going to tell it, no, don't do the autofill. And here's what I'm going to do. I want to take the difference between X and just this value. Every time it's going to be this value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put dollar sign C, dollar sign 12. That's one of the great secrets of these spreadsheets. If I put dollar sign, dollar sign, so dollar sign letter, dollar sign number, that tells me every time I do this calculation, don't change this cell, always use that same cell. If I just put C12, the next calculation would do C13, and then it would do C14, and then C15. So by keeping it as dollar sign C, dollar sign 12, every time we do this calculation, it will just use that value right there. Okay, now it didn't give me the autofill option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here 
and fill that down. And now it's taking each of these minus that one. Okay, now we just want to square it. So equal sign, that's how you tell it to do a function. Click on your cell and then hit caret two. Okay, that's called a caret, that little hat. Sometimes people call it a hat. If you do that, that's saying take what's in, in D3 in that cell and square it. Boom, now you can do your autofill, okay? Now, equal sign sum, parentheses, all of them. All those cells, we're gonna add them all up, okay? We don't need to autofill that. We just need one value for that. Then we need to divide it by n minus one. So equal sign this divided by parentheses n minus one close parentheses. Okay, we're just dividing it by five. Then we're gonna do square root. Now square root is kind of funny. You, put, you type equal sign SQRT, okay? And SQRT of that. And there's our standard deviation, 0.03. Okay, so I'm gonna write here standard deviation. And I'm gonna copy this one. So Command C, I'm gonna use a Mac, so it's Option C, I guess, if you're on a PC. And then I'm gonna come up here to paste special and I'm just gonna paste the value. Okay, so our average is a little over 10 and our standard deviation is about 0.03. Now, Having said that, there's an easier way to do the standard deviation. Much easier. The spreadsheet knows how to do standard deviation. So all you got to do is hit equal sign STDV, parentheses, pick your volumes, highlight them all, close the parentheses, and you get exactly the same answer. It's a one function thing. But I wanted to show you how to do it step by step. Okay, now we can do our percent error. Okay, the percent error, okay, again, what you do is, I'm gonna put this in parentheses, you take your, um, your average value, which is your experimental, so our average is the experimental, you subtract from that the true value. Well, this is a 10 milliliter pipette, so 10. Close the parentheses, divide it by the true value, the true value is 10, right? So 10 ml, and then times 100, okay? Now that may look like it's gonna put the 100 in the denominator, but it's actually not. If you do that difference and divide by 10 and then hit times 100, it's gonna put the 10 in the denominator. If you wanted them both to go in the denominator, you could do it by putting this in parentheses, the denominator in parentheses, then that would mean that they're both in the parentheses, but we don't want it to be in the parentheses, right? Because we wanna multiply by 10, I'm sorry, divide by 10, because the true value is 10, and then we wanna multiply by 100 to convert it to a percentage, right? Okay, and there we go, 0.117%. That's pretty small error, right? That's pretty close, you're within 0.1%. Okay, so 0.1% would be that if you had a dollar, I'm sorry, if you had a hundred dollars, so if you had a hundred dollars, 0.117, so that would be like 0.117 dollars, right? That's 11.7 cents. So if I was counting off pennies and I had a hundred dollars worth of pennies, I'd be off by 11.7 cents, 12 cents, okay? So that's two ways to do it. One is with a spreadsheet. I'm using Google Docs, drive.google.com or docs.google.com. It's you know the spreadsheet program, Sheets. Um, but you can also use Microsoft Excel. That's a really powerful um, software package for doing, it comes with Microsoft Office. You have access to that as a student at CUNY. The online version, that's a very powerful spreadsheet program. You can use that one as well. Okay, so I hope this gives you some idea of how to do these statistical calculations.